Okay, so this is 7.3, display in multimedia, which is one of the information processes. But of course, with any multimedia, we need to be able to display it. So how do we do that? Well, this, um, this subject requires you to know the different ways in which you can display multimedia. And uh, initially, people think straight away, oh, well, um, we need to know how um, screens work. Well, yes, you do, but there's also other ways of displaying multimedia. So I'm going to present that to you today. And um, this is a very visual um, lesson. Uh, there is a number of YouTube videos that are worth watching to guide you through. Uh, and of course, if you're watching this in the future, you know, this is made in 2020. If you're watching it in the future, studying this course, uh, the videos may change over time and there may be more advancements in technology. Um, really, this subject is about knowing the advancements in technology. And uh, I do mention one in this, um, but, you know, there might be some other changes, especially with screens, because screens are getting better and better as we go along. So, all right, here we go. So, of course, uh, the heading would be 7.3 displaying in multimedia if you're Following along at home and you're taking notes, um, you know, I thoroughly recommend that you do take notes. Handwritten notes are really important that you do take handwritten notes. Studies show that students who do write handwritten notes in their own writing and uh, tend to learn the content better. So I would thoroughly and always recommend that you do that. The first part of this, of course, is screens. And you would really need to know the four main screens you'd have to know crt lcd uh, oled and also uh, plasma sorry led and and plasma um so let's get on with the original this is what you see here is a plasma uh, sorry <laughs> a um, cathode ray tube um, the green indicates glass uh, so um, it's made of glass and inside the glass, it's actually a, a vacuum. And what's happening is we have what's known as an electron gun. Um, it doesn't work like a gun. It doesn't necessarily fire like a gun, but um, it has um, electrons coming out of it. And that's called a cathode uh, ray gun, basically. You could call it a cathode ray gun. So in here is the cathode and it produces these three colors or Sometimes it produces these three colours, but most of the time it only produces one beam of light or electrons which fire and they go through this system, which is a what's known as the yoke, and it's a um, electromagnet which deflects the electrons and they fire along and they strike the screen. Now this yoke controls the, the um, electrons hitting the screen. They tend to hit the screen along and they light up um, based on um, what uh, the pixel needs to be. So you can see here that um, we have what's known as a phosphorus screen. The electron hits the phosphorus screen and it lights up and judging on what um, it's told to display is depending on what color it actually displays. And that, that happens quite a number of times. Um, we actually can't see the change. Um, our human eye cannot detect it, but um, I do have some videos um, which are coming up which show, and, and of course the slow-mo guys did a great video on um, displaying um, what a CRT looks like, and, and I thoroughly recommend that you watch the entire video because it's pretty awesome what they are able to show, and of course you can only show it in slow-mo. Um, this video here, uh, shows how a cathode ray tube works and, and you can see here that um, this one's not inside a vacuum and you can see that you know there is the little dot that is hitting the phosphorus screen uh, so somehow this guy has actually made this uh, work and he shows what happens when you hit it with a magnet uh, so go ahead and watch that one you get an idea of how CRTs work um, Tech Quickie talk about why they died um, why cathode ray tubes died, and it was based on size. And, um, yeah, you know, I spoiled that for you, but you can have a look. The next one is, of course, uh, a plasma screen. And uh, we, we know that uh, plasma screens contain plasma in, in, in sort of inside this, which 
translates to phosphors and an electrodiode which actually lights it up and then it displays the colours. Uh, we do know that pixels are made up of three different colours. They are blue, green and red. And if you put them all together, you get black. Uh, and if you, sorry, if you put them all together, you get white. And if you turn them off, you get black. And um, that Slow Mo Guys video that I mentioned, which is coming up, uh, does talk about that. Then we have um, another example of it. And here is James May explaining about how plasma screens actually work. Uh, then the next one here is the how t a TV works in slow motion. Um, these guys explain how an LED, sorry, an OLED, this is a massive OLED, O stands for organic, and LED stands for light emitting diode. And so that is a way in which you can display a screen. And the last one's also an LCD, which is li liquid crystal display. And you can certainly look up videos on how they all work. You just basically need to have an understanding of the different types and the comparison of the different types um, based on size, price, all that. Um, also, uh, for example, plasma screens um, actually require a, a real great deal of electricity to actually run. Uh, and so they tended to shy away from them very quickly in the market and go on to things like OLEDs um, and uh, the new one that's coming up is actually laser projectors, which I think is pretty cool. And I've got a video on that as well. So go ahead and watch these videos so that you get an idea of what, um, what we're talking about. Of course, the next one is a, the way in which we can display stuff is through projector. Now, if you go to the cinema, that's how this um, cinema is able to produce on a large screen using a projector. Uh, it uses a light bulb or lights um, to display the image on the screen. Uh, the light bulbs can be quite expensive. Uh, I do remember when I had my first projector in my classroom, uh, the light bulb was about $700 to replace and it only had what's known as 2,000 luminous hours, so it could only be running for about 2,000 hours. So I had to be very conscious of it and of course they'd break very easy if they got too hot and they cracked or they cooled down too quickly after they've been used. They, they, you know, they wouldn't last very long. So you had to be very careful with them, you know. Um, so here's an image of how a um, projector works. So you have your laptop here with your um, screen, and now this uh, obviously is connected via a cable. It interprets that. It uses um, beams of light to, and you can see the three colours that we use. They get projected up to here, and then of course it's projected onto a screen. So that's um, just the basic runnings or operations of a projector. Um, this video, I'm finding uh, Tech Quickie's getting very, Linus is getting very um, um, popular with my presentations because they quickly explain different things. So he talks about laser projectors as fast as possible, but he also talks about why, um, how um, normal light bulb projectors actually work. So you can go ahead and watch that video. The next one, of course, in displaying is displaying multimedia is, of course, sound. And so we, how do you display sound? We use speakers. And, of course, a speaker is just simply a earphone going the opposite way. So here we have the power that comes in, and obviously these would be zeros and ones translated into electrical pulses, causing this magnetic field and the, and the um, soft iron core to actually vibrate. That vibrates this, um, we call it a diaphragm, this one here. It vibrates that diaphragm, which vibrates the air, and hence we get um, air vibrations in the form of airwaves or sound waves. And then, of course, that vibrates our eardrum, our eardrum and our brain, and all the um, bones inside our ear and also uh, translated into electrical pulses and our brain interprets it as sound. HUD stands for head-up display. This is a way in which display and head-up displays, most of the time everyone knows that um, aeroplanes like fighter pilots and things like that use head-up displays. And you can see here that this is showing the um, horizon line or um, the planes relatively 
uh, what would you call that, balance to the horizon. Um, it would have other things like um, altitude. It would have, uh, you know, how high the plane is. It would have speed. It might even have a lock on a target. Maybe that's a target there and it might have a lock on. So it does away from the pilot having to look down and take his eyes off the road. Eyes off the road? Yeah, they're not, not, not really driving along a road, but eyes off the scene so that they don't crash into something. And, you know, um, that could be a quite an expensive outing. Of course, we have another way of displaying a head-up display. This is Google Cardboard. Uh, so there's a little video on how Google Cardboard works. It's basically a virtual reality headset, uh, dirt cheap. Um, I bought one about, ooh, going on nearly five or six years ago for, I think, three bucks from eBay. So, um, you know, and you put your mobile phone in it and you can um, use apps that you can download from the app store and you can have virtual reality and i i do know you can actually choose some videos on youtube to be in virtual reality as well right you know that, that would be pretty cool to just be um you know laying in bed watching a movie with a headset on in virtual reality um or uh, you know that would be very very cool i reckon uh, here's a guy using a Oculus Rift. Um, probably quite uh, back then it would be quite expensive to actually do. And, um, you know, he's using a keyboard and mouse to move around and everyone, um, you know, has seen those um, in new VR places where you can go in and, and you don't use a keyboard and mouse. You actually would use um, a device held in your hand or even a glove. And, of course, you can use um, VR devices. If you wanted to, you can go and watch um, VR fails on YouTube. There are plenty of examples of when you know kids put um, a either a HTC Vive or an Oculus Rift onto um, a grandparent, and then make them go on a roller coaster. And you know it's hilarious how they're falling over, and you know, just what you want to do to a person with a heart issues. Um, the next one, of course, is printers, and there are a number of different types of printers and. Uh, so the first one, the original that came out was known as a dot matrix printer. And it's, it works the same way as a typewriter, except it's just a dot. And of course, um, it's firing the dot against a ribbon, which is colored. And this uh, doesn't quite show you the ribbon, but you know, you could have a 24 pin dot matrix printer and the ribbon would be different colors so that it, it could actually display different colors. Most of the time they just come out in black. Uh, very noisy. Um, uh, I have seen, you know, like, um, you know, when you go and get your car serviced or if you go and buy a pizza, they used to print out using a dot matrix printer. And I have had students in my class say, oh, my work at so-and-so, we have a dot matrix printer. It's that really noisy thing that prints out the receipts. And I'm like, yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. And most of the people do know what a dot matrix printer is. All right. Uh, the other one, of course, is an inkjet printer. And the way it works is this, this printer is actually a dumb terminal. And all the expense and all the, um, uh, the brains of the system is actually in the print to head. It's got a chip in it um, and amazing, there is amazing technology when it comes to how this works. It heats up the little bubble and it fires it onto the, um, onto the page and then, you know, because it's so hot, then it dries quickly and then um, you have your image on the page. Um, they're not the most efficient type of product on, and you can actually see uh, videos like Inkjet's Dirty Little Secret is a video worth watching, um, but there's also videos on the technology involved. The ink cartridges are quite expensive because of the fact that they are the brain and they, um, uh, and also the ink is very expensive to produce as well. And, you know, when I talk, when I give lectures about um, inkjet printers, uh, you know, in my time I've, I've, brought, I've bought several inkjet printers because they're so cheap. And um, it's actually cheaper to buy a new printer than it is sometimes to actually buy an inkjet cartridge. So that's an inkjet printer. The next one, of course, is a laser printer. And it has a drum and... Um, it has a well that has powder in it, right? And um, 
So what happens is the um, we use a laser to actually scan the image onto uh, it, it becomes negatively charged, and this powder, all right, which is called toner, it actually is positively charged. The paper comes along, it gets charged onto this, and then the toner actually goes onto it, and then it heats it onto there as well. So um, obviously you don't have as much wastage like an inkjet printer does, but they're more expensive because of the technology involved to buy a laser printer. Then we have things like a plotter. Um, now, the way in which a plotter works is that uh, this is a roller, so this paper goes backwards and forwards like that. And I haven't really seen one that's been like a colour image one like this. I've mainly seen ones like this, which is a flatbed um, plotter. And, and they use them for site plans or architectural design. So the pen is placed in the arm, and the arm can move backwards and forwards like this, and it also can move that way as well. So that's just a way of displaying multimedia. So, And then, of course, we have things like presentation software. Uh, everyone knows, you know, I'm using PowerPoint at the moment to record this video. Um, we also have... Um, Oh, well, I'm using Prezi as well, so it's an online presentation tool. Uh, why do I use Prezi? Um, just, I don't know, I've just always used it. I like it. Um, I was one of the, I think I'm one of the original users of Prezi out of all the people in the world, and I'm still using it to this day. And um, uh, yeah, I've got a lot of presentations, so I'm, I'm now, I'm actually, you know, transcribing them across to YouTube by making these videos. So uh, that's a, definite different change. Um, this is Slide Rocket. Uh, I think now yeah, Slide Rocket's actually online, which is powerful presentations, but there are heaps of ways in which you can present stuff. Um, I was looking at the other day a piece of software called Adobe Character Animator. Um, you can use that to animate yourself when you're doing a presentation and then um, hit you know, a little caricature of yourself uh, and talks to you and I was going to use that but it's a bit of a tedious process to actually get that from the laptop onto a video so I couldn't be bothered so I just thought I'd just talk to you as well um, then of course we have uh, other ways of displaying these are the Microsoft Office um, products uh, obviously this is an old version of the icons um, you know because there's MS front page the old Microsoft front page where you used to be able to produce websites and uh, you know you don't have that anymore, Microsoft went away from it. It was a really good program actually because it was basically Microsoft Word, but you saved it as a HTML. It was really good, but I don't know why they went away with it. And then of course we had to, everyone had to then learn HTML and CSS and, um, you know, I, I guess now we have publishers so we can do brochures and things like that. You know? Of course we have the, um, I could have called this the Macromedia suite of products, but now Adobe brought, bought all these products. Dreamweaver, Flash, what's that one, like a PowerPoint presentation type thing. And um, yeah, I'm not sure, you, could prob you probably know the icons for these ones. I don't really know them, but um, you know, they're different ways of displaying. So we can do web pages with Dreamweaver, we can do animations with Flash. Um, we also have Adobe Premiere, which um, people use, After Effects, you know, they're the suite of products that we have available to us that you can actually display different types of multimedia. Um, here's an example of Flash. This is an old version of Flash. This is what I'm used to. Most people are now used to actually the layers uh, or your um, timeline to being down the bottom, your properties over here. Uh, you've still got your stage, okay? So this is showing, obviously, a... Um, path-based animation, I nearly said cell-based, but it's path-based animation, I can tell because of that line there, which is a classic tween, and of course that's displaying um, what the animation is there in Flash. And then of course we have things like, well, this is um, JavaScript, because it's called JS Fiddle, which is the program that you write it in. Um, it's doing, from what I can do, let's see, basically it's doing... Um, putting items in a dustbin, <laughs> which is simple, but you can see LI stands for list, A is the paragraph, href is the links. Uh, so it's HTML inside a jQuery, so that's interesting. 
just a quick example of uh, HTML. Uh, this video here is a 21 minute video on printers and scanners. Worth watching one day um, when maybe when you know you've got nothing else to do or you're just sitting down in a classroom and um, you know you want to twiddle your thumbs for a little while, put your headphones on and watch this video on the ways in which we display, which is using printers. Okay, so I'm going to put all the links of the videos into the description. I'll put them also into our OneNote and I will provide you with some homework. And after this, we've only got 7.4 and 7.5 to go of the course, the entire course of the HSC. How awesome is that?